So you're working on a game and you want to squeeze out all the performance you can get. This guide is just for you. So in this guide I'm going to show you how to get better performance without changing anything about the game itself. So the code won't change, you don't have to edit the code, the graphics won't change, and it is just basically free performance and there are some minor trade-offs I will mention when covering them. So most of these are in the player settings and to get there, click edit, project settings, and then the project settings opens up and you can see player right here. Now scroll down until you see other settings and here is where all the good stuff is at. So the first section you see is batching. I recommend to keep this at the default and if needed, you can enable dynamic batching. I will make another video if you want about the dynamic batching, so make sure to subscribe for that. Um, but for now, I'm going to just leave it at the default, which is just fine. The biggest change I usually find is the scripting backend. By default, this is at mono, and then the C sharp code will compile into IL code. And this can be easily read by machines, but it still needs to convert it to the actual machine code. If you don't understand this, that is totally fine. Basically, there is an extra step for the code to run on a device. So you can change this to IL to CPP, and it will change this IL code to C++ code, and this will be compiled into machine code. And this runs a lot faster, especially for some math. So that's absolutely amazing, and this is basically free of charge. The only thing it did is it did increase the build times. So if you have a weak computer, maybe for small iterations, just stick to mono. And if you have a bigger project that you need better performance for, or if you make a master release just for Steam or whatever store you use, then IL2 CPP is definitely worth a shot. The next thing is the C++ comp compiler configuration. And this is the amount of optimizations applied to the code. So generally I stick to release because it works just fine. But if you want to squeeze out every bit of performance, changing this to master might get a few more performance on the CPU side. By default, the incremental garbage collection is enabled. Just keep this on unless it is absolutely necessary to keep it off. If you don't know what it does, just keep it on. It will stretch out the garbage collection across multiple frames, so it doesn't have a large lag spike. So it is really good to keep this on. If you're just starting a project, switching to the new input system might be beneficial for performance. Again, if you've got a project, just leave it at alt unless you want to convert it. It is totally fine. And next, of course, we need to check the optimizations. The first one is to pre-bake the collision meshes. And this is generally great for any physics-based things that, well, get pre-baked so that it doesn't have to happen on runtime. Just keep this on. i never seen any issues with it. But if you do, let me know in the comments below. The keep loaded shaders alive might increase performance a little bit, but it will increase RAM. So again, depends on the platform. If you're targeting Android, maybe keep this off. But if you have a lot of issues with shaders, this might increase performance a little bit. Next, we got the managed striping levels, and this is the amount of code which is uh, striped for IL2 CPP. So if this is at the higher value, it might cause some issues, but it might also decrease the build time. So basically try a bit with this. It can also decrease the actual game size. So I stick to low or sometimes medium, never really touched high because it was just not necessary. So it isn't that important, just stick it at low until you want to experiment more. For the vertex compression, I recommend leaving that at the mixed, so the default. For the optimized mesh data, turning this on can help with performance because, well, it will optimize the mesh data. But do note, it can change some post-processing effects. So for example, a game I worked on Nowhere Inside, it did have issues that the lines didn't show up with the optimized mesh data on. So again, this depends on your project. For 99.9% .9 of the projects, this will help for performance, but do know it can cause some issues. So if you've got issues with post-processing or shaders, this might be an option to check. Also, if you want lower build size, you can de enable the texture mid-map striping, which again, can be useful. This is for the locks, and if you do a debug lock in Unity, it will cause some garbage to be made, which needs to be collected. So for builds, you can turn off certain locks. So for example, you can do a regular lock, an error and, oh wait, um, the error we do want on, we want the locks to be off. And using this, it will save some garbage. But of course, you should actually manage your debug locks yourself. But hey, this might just help if you don't want to do that or if it's not possible or whatever. So it does just show up the locks you actually need for debugging. So this was all for Windows and most of the same applies for HTML5, Android and any other platforms. 
For example, HTML5 just has IL2 CPP as default, which is pretty nice. For Android, there is actually some performance to win. The first of all is the graphics API. For me, OpenGL ES3 did have some better performance than Vulkan. But again, this can depend on your game, on your project, or whatever. So just try it out and see what works best. The thing that helps a lot with Android is IL2 CPP. Again, turn it on. And you will see these also are now available. So on Mono, you can only build for ARM v7, which is quite old by now. And if you turn it on, you can also compile for ARM64, which is a lot faster. And almost all new phones support this. So that's generally great to turn on to increase performance. Also, if you want to target Chrome OS, this is required. And you can turn Chrome OS on again if you got a game for it. So for me, it's off. So scrolling down, everything is just the same. Um, if you don't use Chrome OS, you can just turn this off. Again, depends on your project. And all of this is also just the same. So these are the things that don't change anything to your actual game itself. So the graphics are the same, the code is the same. And next, if you want to go further, you can go into the GPU side of things. So the quality right here. I will make another video about the GPU performance and how to debug this. And there's one quick thing I do want to show in the latest Unity version, so 2021.2. You can see in the build settings right here that there's an IL2 CPP code generation and you can select faster runtime. So the game will run faster on the device you target, or you can choose faster and smaller builds. And this will decrease performance, but it will also decrease the build time. So again, if you make small iterations, this might be worth it. And otherwise just stick to faster runtime because hey, it has better performance. On that, there isn't a lot more to change. So this is how to optimize your game for the CPU side of things without changing any code. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to let me know by liking, subscribing, comment down below what you want to learn so I can maybe cover it in another video. I would love to make more performance targeted videos. So again, hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.